as we continue in worship, we come to confess our sins before God. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. So may the God of healing and wholeness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh and be cleansed from all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect, the special prayer for today, Epiphany. Creator of the heavens, who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and sustain us, that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 60. The glory of Zion. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephraphar, and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. And today's psalm is Psalm 72, and we're reading verses 10 to 15. And like that first reading, it picks up on the theme of people coming from afar to worship God. The kings of Tarshish and the Isles shall play tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring gifts. All kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall do him service. For he shall deliver the poor that cry out, the needy and those who have no helper. He shall have pity on the weak and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall be their blood in his sight. Long may he live. Unto him may be given gold from Sheba. May prayer be made for him continually and may they bless him all the day long. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Gospel is taken from Matthew 1, chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 1. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea, during the time when Herod was king. 
Soon afterwards, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very angry, and so was everybody else in Jerusalem. He called together the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, Where will this Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered, for this is what the prophet wrote. Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading citizens of Judah. For from you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret. To show you more closely, I hope, the wise men from my East African nativity. So you can see that I have three wise men. One, two, and the third. Of course, Matthew doesn't tell us whether or not there were three. But this nativity, like many, has three. At the crib service on Christmas Eve, I used um, the chocolate nativity to tell the story of the birth of Christ and of the visit by the shepherds. Just before the reflection and for a bit of fun, I'm going to return to the chocolate nativity and we will have the chocolate account of the reading of the visit from the wise men, the major. So there were some wise men from a strange far away land. They might have been from Yorkshire. I should have warned you, the puns are terrible. Or maybe they were even Maltesers. Or Maltesers. They were smarties. And they certainly were not nerds. And they were watching the moon in orbit when they saw a new light in the Milky Way. Could it be Mars? No, it was a special star bursting into sight, signalling the birth of a king. As the clock went tick-tock, they decided to follow the star. So they packed a picnic, did up their buttons and climbed on their camels. The snow was falling in twirls, or maybe not and large flakes settled on the ground, which became so crunchy they couldn't even make snowballs. Although despite the snow, they didn't see any penguins. While they traveled, they listened to some rap music by the M&Ms, but they were good trackers. And some time later, they arrived. They traveled across the desert, not down the quality street, they went to Hobnob with King Herod. Herod was very interested. A king has been born. He could hardly conceal his evil snickers. He reckoned he had scotched this rumour before it began to ripple through Jerusalem. But Herod was a bad man. So the wise men set off and found the young Jesus, who was much kinder. And they offered him their bounty. One present was gold, but the other presents weren't all gold. There was some frankincense and some myrrh. He had toys as well, including some skittles. One of the men dropped his present. He was a real butterfinger. Then God warned them in a dream that Herod was up to his old tricks and really wanted to kill the child. So they headed home over the hills by a rocky road and Herod's evil plans lay in pieces. Now that's the familiar st st story told at Christmas. Some hunters don't believe it, but according to the Bible, Jesus was born so that all sorts of people might come to know God's love. Like the shepherds and the wise men, millions of people are looking for meaning and purpose, some kind of boost a refresher in difficult times. 
But then Jesus of the Nativity is a real life hero. And the Christmas story really is a cause for celebration. And whether you will be at work, rest or play, we wish you all a Merry Christmas, although that's past, and a very happy New Year.